in to another getaway special interview. I'm your host today, Daddy Domino, and with me today, I have the sweet, the loving, the smile. Look at that. Who I have with me today? Tell the people who you are. I am Louisa Elia Allen, number 82 on the Oh, straight out with Straight out with That's what I'm talking about. Number two, 82 on the ballot for what? For a judge, district court judge of the 19th JDC. Well, you know, a lot of my people. I got you. I got you straight to the why should I vote? If I stay in what areas? To what what areas you in? The areas that I cover are Zion City. What up? Glen Oaks. Oak. Brookstown. Brookstown. Banks. Banks. South Baton Rouge. South Baton Rouge. Scott. Scott. So if you you gonna be judged for and Fairfield. And Fairfield. Hmm. So straight out with the question, like my people want to do. Why should I vote for you? All right. So. I'm the only candidate who has a unique experience. I've already served in this district for six years, from 2016 to 2022. I was a staff attorney of the 19th day in the division. Oh, in division J? Yeah. In that division that you're running for? In that division. So you're I'm familiar with it? So I'm familiar with it. Wow. How um, many years again, my bad? Six. Six years familiar with the division. I like that. You know, personally, I, I, I like that. So, okay. All right. What else you got? Um, so I have a working knowledge of criminal law, civil law, and specialty courts. So I was staff to for the criminal court, I was staff to for the civil court, and I was staff to for the military court. Okay. Staff to for the so for my people, when we talk to my people, if I don't know something, my people be like, they know I'm an A. Like, cause I just, my mind be kind of like this, right? Right. What is a staff attorney? Okay, so a staff attorney is basically the advisor to to a judge, if you want to be really honest. Basically, the staff attorney writes the opinions, the staff attorney does the research, the staff attorney communicates with all of the defense attorneys, the DA, and the um, the plaintiff's lawyers on the civil side. So, mm. so we have we're heavily involved, hands on, and we also work with the litigants and families of criminal defendants because. The way that you get to a judge actually is through the staff attorney. Mm. And one of the things about court is one thing you don't do is you don't make the staff attorney mad. Mm. That's game there, see? That's why I ain't gonna question. Because y'all gonna sit there and watch, and then they're gonna be like, oh man. And then you wasn't gonna ask Alexa, Alexa or Google it. Shut up, I'm not talking to you. Anyway, I asked him questions. Now, I like that part, but that means you know the inner working. You you know what needs to be done. What ain't right? Tell me something, cause I'm gonna tell you something, man. I done been in court fighting charges, and I done got set back like 20, 30 times. I'm, I'm exaggerating. I never over ten. The most I've been set back seven times. That's a lot on one charge. Like, can you explain that to the people and tell them how you feel about it, and do you think it should be different? So those are that's continuances, and that comes from. Maybe a backlog of cases, or maybe they're not simply not working the files. I don't know, but that's up to the judge to really make an assessment and really hold people accountable, like mm. holding the DA accountable, holding the defense attorney accountable, and uh, we gotta we gotta stop the continuances that we have. Like ten continuances, I've seen. On one case, that's like. So you agree that it's, it's too much. I agree that that's too much, and so what you have to do is you have to assess every case, and you really have to be like, look, two continuances. If y'all are not ready to go to trial, you are not ready to go to trial. Then you need to figure out what you're going to do with this case and what you're going to do with this charge. But people have school, people have jobs, mm. people have right. things that they are working toward. And I understand that they may have gotten caught up. Um, with a charge or, or something like that, and if even if they get caught up with that, you know they are still have a constitutional right to the process. Mm -hmm. So th I, this is the part I want to learn from you uh, with all that experience. Because so I know when I went to court, it was arraignment, then motion, and then what's the next one? Is it another one? Yes. So it's arraignment, then you have motion, mm -hmm. and then you have status. Conference. Okay. So status, why well, set a case for status is really to see where we are in the case. Maybe a plea deal would be worked out, maybe a charge would be this, uh, this, this. Mm -hmm. And so after that, we would have basically a trial. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's a four, it's four level. Yeah. 
Okay, so you already started out with four levels, so each continuous a turn four and a five, six, seven, eight, eight. And when you normally see the continuous is that, in my experience, you see them with motions mm -hmm. and you see them with that. Well, all the five ones come in. Correct. Right, right. I understand that from going through it. It's like that in family court, too. Correct. Kind of, kind of. Yeah, kind, of. kind of. A little different. Yeah. A little different. Yeah, yeah. So I see all that experience. Uh, I'm asking you this question for a reason, because somebody told me, and I think this is a great point, uh, you have the opportunity to be the youngest. Yes. Judge. Yes. So you can make history with this. History. History. Where my sister's at? Ladies, I think this is big for y'all. And me personally, I'm older than you, right? Right. Oh. Uh, I'm ready to see something new because the old folks that had it for a while and I'm not talking down on my elders. Don't want me. I'm sorry. I'm just saying it's been bad and it ain't even going to go. So I like to try new things. And I am open minded, right? And then that district you're running, majority of the people that come through court, the criminals that's black males are, are young. Yes. Under the age of 25. Yes. You know? So, me personally, I think you have a connect right in the middle. Well, I can create that balance. Because, see, I know what's going on with the kids that are, you know, young children, and I know what's going on with the, with the older people. Right. And I also think, like, judges, you also need to have kind of a balance of a real working knowledge and real life experience and, and trials that you probably have gone through or experienced. So, in my 33 years of life, I, I feel like I've seen a lot. Growing up, oh, yeah, you're 33. I'm just saying, <laughs> a, a, a I ain't flirting because my girl hit me in the head, but I'm just saying, you don't look like 33. I'm just saying, you look, you look young. I thought you were gonna say you're gonna be 30, 20 something, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. <laughs> 33. Yes. That's the golden number. Yeah, that's a genius. Oh, let him work, let him work longer. You know, we believe in him. Well, yes, I like it. See, but see, I also seen you around and seen. Mm -hmm. And you sit up there and you talk. Like, I done left you several places. I went in, got my work done, spoke to who I spoke to, and you know, we left and you go, you still there. Yes. So how do you feel about your senior community? I, I love them because mm -hmm. that's knowledge right there. That's wisdom, that's knowledge, just things that I can, can soak in. Because I was raised by my grandparents, so I, I love the senior community. That's why you got that old soul. That That's spirit why I like that. Oh, Lord. Yeah, because you're so polite and you talk, you talk, you call young people, hey, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I see that Southern charm. Uh, and you know, that know? Southern charm, you know, I do have an alias. It's, uh, we talk about that. You know, they refer <laughs> to me as the Southern Bell. And so I got that name, Attorney Southern Bell. I got that from actually the courthouse when I started working there. Yes, they didn't know what to do about my draw. Yeah. It was a Southern draw. You know, you can hear it. It's kind of, it's kind of bad, mm -hmm. but it, it's my draw, and it's okay. <laughs> so, so when yeah. I was working in there, one of the things they would say to me was like, "Oh my God, how do you, what girl? You, you know what? You're gonna be. I'm gonna call you Attorney Southern Bell because." You soft spoken, but when you speak, it's powerful. I know, I know. And I so know. it always stuck with me. So I, I registered that that name as a, a trademark. I'm also the trademark queen of the South. I have trademarks of heavy, heavy brands out there. And that's very important because we always coming up with some type of ideas. Correct. You need to help you get those your way straight up. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, yeah. That's why I like telling the truth. I need help. Okay. We talk after the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. And I'm claiming, I'm calling you, y'all. I'm sitting next to the judge. Now, this is what I want to tell my people. I want you to add a little more to this. You know, we only got 30 minutes, so I want to add this to my people. I know people in Widow. Mm -hmm. I know people in Zassi. Mm -hmm. I know people in Fairfield. Mm -hmm. I know people in Scotland. Hey, I'm dying now. I know people in all those areas, right? But those areas are my highly traveled areas. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in one of those areas every day. Mm -hmm. Every day of my life. Mm -hmm. yeah, if I get up, go there, I'm in one of them, right? I think that people should really take into account uh, who will be processing and being the judge of your cases when you get arrested in that area. They got a lot of people who hadn't got their life right and hadn't got things together who, just the prison capital, let's just be real. 
you gonna go to jail here quick. Yeah. So let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. So this is how it works. In criminal court, you have uh, duty groups. Mm -hmm. Every judge that serves on a criminal judge has a specific group. And they rotate out. So let's say- Oh, oh that's what we call in the streets. What judge on call? The judge is on call. Oh, okay, good. Y'all got that? All right, talk to me. Okay, so what happens is, let's say for instance, you have, you get arrested. We're just speaking to exist. Let's say you get arrested on my loop. Mm -hmm. Your case, if it's a felony, it's going to come to me. If it is a misdemeanor case, it'll go to some, another judge. Okay. But I would be, I would be the judge setting that bond if, if and when I'm elected. Mm -hmm. And so then, let's say you get another charge and you're arrested, and your weakness, let's say it's on Judge um, Judge Johnson's week. Mm -hmm. That's a felony case, and Judge Johnson would. If it's a felony case, Judge Johnson would set that bond. Mm -hmm. If it's a misdemeanor, Judge Johnson would set that bond. But let's say you already have a felony in my court. Well, even though you got arrested with Judge Johnson, your case was another felony. Mm, because you got a previous case. Because you have a previous case. Oh, so there ain't no more in case you in front of me, though. Right. Ooh, okay. And, and I, I look at it like this, you know. What do you do? You well, have that's to that first felony case was resolved. Okay, okay. Then and it's you, different. Then it's different. Okay. But if it's still open in Judge Allen's mm -hmm. court, then that... Second person gonna come to me too. Right. I just be want my people to see and understand some things that every neighborhood that you named over there, do you got any uh some urban some black? Yes, it's 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 a it's a minority district. It is. And I, I would want a judge in there that reflects me who I feel like who can understand me and I'm the I was the type of criminal that I took my name. So if I was doing something that ran fifty and you gave me 50, I'm not mad at the judge. I knew what I was doing. That's why people tell so much. So I'm giving you the street perspective. I'd rather, I rather somebody who really understood what we go through. You know what I mean? And I got to learn a little bit more about you and your upbringing and, and what you grew up in. And I don't, you don't have to share it, but I think if people really research they, they, the candidates like they should, you'll see the person who is more like you, more who could really understand you, who can understand the broad spectrum. I like the point that you grew, you were raised by your grandparents. So you have a different respect of elders. I saw that for myself. You had to tell me that. I also like where your age is, like you said, Jesus number, you know, 33. You, you are able to be unbiased. You know what I'm saying? It, it, at all times, I feel. It, That's what I feel. And judges are, are held to the standard under um, oath and law. You have to remain unbiased and you have to be impartial. And there can't be an appearance of impropriety. Mm -hmm. And I see you a lot in the, in, in the community. And remember this get away. So I, I, I'm supporting you. I believe in you. Uh, you got my trust. But I heard you in one of your speeches say, I'm, the way I'm in the community now, I'm still going to come back into the community. Now I see Judge Johnson out there, and I see I see Gail Grover, uh, uh, Judge Gail Grover. No disrespect, man. Um, I see. I'm trying to remember the name. That's why I said it fast like that. I see very few, though. Is what I'm saying. I heard you say that you're going to still be out there trying to connect with the community and doing things like you're doing now in your campaign. Can you tell me more about that? Yeah, 100%. I've already started my installation of block parties. I have a block party at Miss Lily's um, in Glen Oaks. French Toast. 573 5th Avenue. Come see me 6 to 8 p.m. on Friday. We have one East Island here. We're trying to build another one in South Avenue. We're hoping to get that off the, off the ground. And, um, if not, I've done a, been a part of the block party at Miss South Avenue already. Mm -hmm. And so what I feel that is missing from a from the perspective of the constituents is that okay, once these people get elected, and this is for any office, mm -hmm. they get elected and we don't see them boost on the ground anymore until it's until it's time for an election cycle. And I don't think that that's that's fair or yeah. right. 
Um, I think you still have to have a presence with your constituents. I think, think we, especially for judges, like I know there's certain things you cannot do and there's certain things that you can do as judges. Mm -hmm. But as an elected official, I do believe it's important for me to still see my uh, community that I particularly serve thriving. Right. And not just sitting in my in, in a bad situation. Correct. I like it. I like it. I thought that was interesting. I, you know, and, and the best thing that you can hear from a person, um, one of the things I've heard on the trail is like, oh, I remember you as a staff attorney um, working in the Vichy J. I remember that. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, I got my life together. And I just changed my people playing some things. You know, you were very helpful with you and the judge mm -hmm. and staff. You know, that warms a person's heart to hear that, you know, you had an impact on your life some kind of way. Even if they made a mistake. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I like that. Is there anything else that you uh, you plan on doing? When you become the speaking into existence, is it anything else that you want to tell the people? Yeah. Uh, with that, with their vote, uh, you know that you you got plans to do. My my plan is always strictly about being a public servant and being about the people because I think the highest form of currency is people. It's not money. People think money is everything, but it's not. It's, it's people that make the world go round, right? Mm -hmm. And so when we're thinking about that and, and looking at that. <laughs> I want to be able to follow the law, which I will. Right. And but I want to look at the person as a person, as a whole person. There are a lot of things that I feel as a judicial system, the justice system mm -hmm. has to become more trauma informed. Mm -hmm. Understanding we have a lot of things that are going on in the community that need to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm also a poet, so I've written, written poetry and all this. But there's a there's a systemic issue where you know a person may come into court and arrest mm -hmm. and you know, if they come in and arrest and I'm wondering well, what's going on with the rain mm -hmm. you know I need to know what happened what, what led you here sometimes it could be okay the reason why a person is suffering from substance abuse is because they have lost their dad or they lost their mom you know they had a COVID is the only COVID negatives mm -hmm. that they have or the reason why they have turned to you know deal is because okay they don't know how else to get a job, or how else to start mm -hmm. uh, start a job. Maybe they have a talent that went unnoticed in school. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's important for us to get involved at the, at the earlier ages and, and even catch them at the, the 18 to 24 age. Right. Like you said, most of the people that's coming to the court, they, they're between 18 and 24. Mm -hmm. So that means something wasn't done when they were in, in school to really, you know, Right. Bridge the gap mm -hmm. to, to where they would not go out and, um, you know, commit different actions or infractions. I, I got an interesting fact. I, I started researching the average grade level of people who are incarcerated or, or become incarcerated, and it was sixth grade. So that means after elementary school, in middle school, something happened. So we got East Baton Rouge Parish school system, so we know. I went to Glen Oaks, uh, producing with the Glen Oaks, and we, we learned a lot of stuff on YouTube. Not shitting on my school, they gave me the basics, but um, you gotta realize we educated people that come in front of you to a broken system. And I'm glad that you have the compassion and thought to even care about why. You know, not all people are, 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 are bad people, and some bad people gonna have to come to your court, and you gotta have to do what you gotta do. And uh, the real respect. Yeah, and that's why you gotta look at the pretrial level stuff too. Uh, there are certain things you can do pretrial. For example, somebody being arrested and they, they say, hey, this is what's going on. Um, you know, they may need grief counseling, they may need some mental health counseling. Mm -hmm. You know, they may need some resources. So I do feel like the court has to kind of, when I say bridge gap with the community, that means all things on deck to provide like wraparound services for people to get help. Um, and where it's warranted and where it's needed. So mm -hmm. definitely, that's something I plan to do um, with churches and nonprofit organizations and things of that nature. I definitely plan to do that. And I'm really excited about this thought. You know, I told, told you about this program. Okay. It's my baby. It's called the Tulsa Initiative. Mm -hmm. But it's a program because I'm into small businesses and I'm into entrepreneurship. 
Um, it's a program where we take young men that's ages 18 to 24. Mm -hmm. It's all, it's global. And they're able to get seed money to start their companies. Mm -hmm. And a lot of young men that came to that program, they're, very, they're absolutely driving. He one guy, he has his own outdoor store. Mm -hmm. Um, like, like you know, like Tulsa, Oklahoma, type, like yeah. like Wall Street type. I love it. Yeah, so I want to be able to okay if, if if you know if there's an outlet for that to be something in the court as a wraparound program. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that would be very very helpful. That would help drug dealers too. Now I want you to get your information out there because we're out of time and tell them how they can get in touch with you, uh, how they can find out more about your campaign, and tell them what's your number and everything else. All right, well, my name is Brazilia Allen. I'm number 82 on your ballot, Allen on the ballot. So you can reach me on Instagram at Brazilia for Judge 2023. I'm on Facebook, Brazilia for Judge. You can also reach me on my personal Instagram, well, Attorney Seven Bell. Attorney Seven Bell that on Facebook and Instagram. Um, the campaign email is committee at Brazilia for Judge.com. The um, website is reazaleaforjudge.com and then if you want to call my committee you can call us at 225-800-2169 if you want to get involved um, and everything so we, we accept the volunteers boots on ground let's get it we appreciate you coming thank you for having me yeah, you know we can't even get you a bonnet like everybody get like a bonnet or a do-rag for coming to group up you know, always <laughs> we gotta start getting them on deck you know, we're going to be braids and just give the guys do rags. Unless you want to do rag. You know what? Uh -huh. <laughs> right, it's silk. Uh -huh. It's silk, buddy. That's okay. <laughs> Thank y'all for tuning in. Appreciate you.